in the account of the crucifixion that we just all read together from St. Luke's Gospel, uh, you may have noticed that just as Jesus was about to breathe his last breath from the cross, it says that the curtain in the temple in Jerusalem ripped in two. Remember that thick curtain? That thick curtain in the temple in Jerusalem that, uh, in, in one sense, uh, separated people from God. In the temple in Jerusalem, the, the holiest place in the whole temple was this small enclosure called the Holy of Holies, where everybody believed God was there in the Holy of Holies. They believed certainly that God was every, everywhere, but God was especially there in the Holy of Holies. But the entryway to it was covered by this thick, like a three-inch thick curtain, and none of the people would go inside the Holy of Holies. It was to be in God's presence, they believe, would, would kill you. It was just too holy of a place. It was only once a year that the chief priest would go inside and carry out sacrificial acts. But it says that when Jesus was just about to die, Jesus in the very process of dying, that that curtain tore in two. Now why was that? What does that signify? One way I have of thinking about it is that the torn curtain helps us see again the, the tear in the universe. That's how one of the early Christian writers in about the 300, about the year 300 said, there is a tear in the universe. That God created a beautiful world. God created a world where everything is whole and beautiful and good. But we human beings, through our fears, through our greed, through our resentments, through our anger, we begin to tear things apart, and so our universe is torn, it's torn between love and hate, it's torn between uh, fear and hope, between hope and hopelessness. We see that tear in the world day after day, we read in the paper day after day, such contrast to what we humans are capable of doing. On one page of the newspaper, we'll read about a family that is loving their children and caring their children, doing anything possible for their children. And then on the next page of the, of the newspaper, we'll read about a family who has mistreated their children and truly abused them. Such contrast to what we human beings do. Or on one page of the newspaper, we'll hear a story about how there's been an earthquake in a certain country, and all the surrounding countries come with rescue, come with supplies, come with hope. It's a kind of an example of what humans do at their best. And then six months later, all those countries break out into war with each other over a fight over some parcel of land. There is a tear in the universe. And if we're honest, there is also a tear even in our own lives. That even in our own lives, we are torn by so many different emotions and feelings. The Episcopal uh, preacher and author, Alan Jones, in one of his journals, talks about reading the crucifixion story like we did this morning. And he said, when I read that story, I see that I am torn into so many parts. All of the people of the crucifixion story are in me. He says, there is a, there is a Judas in me who betrays others. Let me read the story about Judas betraying Jesus. We have such judgment, and we should, about the terrible betrayal he did. And yet, if we're honest in thinking about our own lives, are there moments when we betray others, when we are not loyal to others, when we speak falsely to others? He says, there is a Judas in me that betrays others. There is a Simon Peter in me who denies the very things I believe in. There is a Pilate in me who continually judges the people around me. There is a Mary in me weeping and alone. There is a soldier in me who tries to keep order but then becomes gambling away for clothes. There is a disciple in me who just runs away from fear. And there is also in me, he says, a Jesus suffering and weeping for others. I am torn into so many different voices and urges and paths. We confess this day, at the beginning of Holy Week, that there is a tear in the universe, and that there is even a tear in our own lives. <clears throat> we confess that, but confession by itself is not enough. We may be grieved, we may grieve what has happened, we may set every intention of living better lives. But we are like an addict who can't kick the habit. We are caught up in this pattern of fear and violence and anger and envy and jealousy.
jealousy. We're caught up in that habit, and we can't kick the habit by ourselves. We can't do it by ourselves. We need someone to help us. We need someone who will do something for us. And so Jesus does. Jesus does do something for us. Jesus responds to this terrible tear in the universe by climbing up on the cross and letting his own heart be torn open. Jesus' heart, Jesus' heart is torn open so that our heart can be healed, so that the world itself can be mended back together again. All four of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, tell this story of Holy Week. But Luke has a particular detail that the other, the other three don't. It's when Jesus is processing into Jerusalem, we heard the, the processional gospel this morning, as Jesus is coming into Jerusalem and people are shouting Hosanna to him, it says that he gets to a certain place that's a high place in the road, probably up around the Mount of Olives. He gets to a place in the road where he can look down on the whole city of Jerusalem. And it says that when he sees Jerusalem, he begins to weep. Just like when he was at the tomb of his good friend Lazarus who had died, Jesus begins to weep. And Jesus says to the people of Jerusalem that he's looking at, he said, if only you knew the things that make for peace, but you do not, they are still hidden from your eyes. If only you knew the things that make for peace. So much we long for peace in the world, for safety in the world. So much we long for peace in our families. So much we long for peace in our own hearts. But Jesus weeps for us because so often we don't know the things that make for peace. We can't see what to do. And so this day, this week comes along, Holy Week, and Christ is up on the cross to open our eyes, to open our eyes. First of all, as we've already said, to open our eyes to the ways in which our lives are torn. But more importantly, to open our eyes to the way in which God comes to give us peace, in which God comes to mend our lives together again. Back to that curtain in the temple and why it tore. Remember that the curtain's job was to separate God and people. So part of the meaning of that is that when Jesus died, when Jesus gave his life, that curtain was torn to say, now people can get to God again. And more importantly, God can get out of that little box. God can get out to people. It's in Jesus' giving his life that God more than ever comes into the world to bring us healing and to bring us joy and to bring us life. And that's what we celebrate today. God rushing into our lives to give us life. We call this Sunday not only Palm Sunday, we also call it Sunday of the Passion. Sunday of the Passion. We use the word passion in a lot of different ways. Usually when we hear the word passion, we use it in reference to a romantic novel or a TV show where one person is just uncontrollably in love with another. That's passion. Or sometimes we use passion to talk about someone's uh, fixed focus on a job. They're involved in a project and it's their passion to get it done. I was reading about one, some of the scientists involved in the genetic proje uh, project, the genome project. And they were saying about one of their colleagues, they were saying, Sam's passion is to unwind the mystery of all the genetic code. That's his passion. He won't do anything but that. Well, when we say that this is the Sunday of the Passion, it really involves both things. That first of all, God is uncontrollably in love with us. And so through Jesus, God comes to be present among us because it's God's passion. It's God's passion to give us life. It's God's passion to mend us. It's God's passion to bring the world back again into a just order, to bring families back together and to, and to, and to save our own hearts. That's what we celebrate today, God's passion in coming among us. We 